right. Here we go. Pirate's Booty. <laughs> this card is ass. <laughs> this is so bad. Guy, just <laughs> get it. If this card costs three, literally costs exactly the same as as Fun Dead Razor, I think Fun Dead Razor would still be better because it just solidly, reliably draws you those two cards instead of this one, which will usually draw you zero. Uh, maybe it'll draw you one. Two would be amazing. Three is still almost impossible. This card is so bad. It's so garbage. The, the, I actually would put this in delete tier too. You know what? I'm making a delete tier. Just screw it. This is the last straw. What's going on everybody? This is Fry. So today we are doing another tier list. Today we are going to be doing it for the Brainy class going through starting with the one cost cards all the way uh, through Trickster. I will be explaining as usual what are the uses of every single card, uh, like what kind of decks they fit into, and then uh, putting them on this tier list as you can see right over here. I'm going to basically be doing it in terms of usefulness. So the S tier are going to be, it's going to be good in basically every single deck, or it's just going to be in particular decks, one of the most powerful cards in the game. Uh, and the F tier will basically be never include uh, in any deck at all. A, A will be like, it's good in a lot of, very good in a lot of, lot of decks. B is like, it's good in some, has some solid uses. C is barely has uses and D is... Maybe only use it for budget decks. As usual, if you want me to do another tier list, let me know in the comment section below on YouTube uh, what class you would like to see me do next. Uh, and we are just going to start off with Cardboard Zombie. All right, next. We're going to go right <laughs> into Chimney Sweep. Um, Chimney Sweep. So this card actually has really good stats for a one drop. It's a one cost three, two. Um, it also is weak just because it only it can only be played on the heights lane. Uh, you can sort of use this, use this as an aggro card. The problem with Chimney Sweep is if you ever get two, and what, let's say one's already on the field, it's a problem. Also, with the thing with aggro cards, the fact that you're limiting this to one lane, aggro cards you definitely want to be putting onto the field. Cardboard zombie <laughs> unsubbed. Thanks so much, Matahiwu. Uh, aggro cards, you, you want to be able to put them onto the field in any place that you can because you have to be placing your aggro cards in an open lane uh, just so they'll be able to hit face. I haven't really found the great use of Chimney Sweep. I think it's okay as a one drop for budget players, but because there's so many better one drops in the Brainy class and otherwise than Chimney Sweep, uh, even as aggro cards, I am going to put this right into C tier. Moving right along. We are going to go to Interdimensional Zombie. Okay, uh, I'm going to explain this one final time. Interdimensional Zombie used to be a 1 cost 1-3 one with this exact um, ability that when you play another science card, this will turn into a random 3 cost card. So really, if you look at it, just a 1 cost random 3 drop is extremely good. Uh, and this is a very powerful card regardless. Now, what they did to this card, I'll show you. For one second, uh, they decided to make interdimensional zombie. It says it's now overall better. <laughs> one cost two two instead of a one three, which is a, a huge blunder. Uh, the explanation that they're giving is that you can use this sort of as an aggro card. So having two damage is obviously for aggro cards a lot better uh, than one damage. You don't want to have one damage pinging your opponent's uh, block meter consistent, you know, constantly and giving them superpowers for free. That's the best way to lose in an aggro deck. Interdimensional Zombie was much better as a 1-3 because it's only going to be hitting face that that first turn. Uh, you can just play it on turn one. Turn two, you're always going to try to be transforming this into uh, that three cost card. And the fact that it can survive that one turn, it doesn't die to all the two damage, uh, you know, plants and tricks like Banana Bomb or just anything that really does two damage. Uh, and it's, you're able to get a three cost card on the field on turn two. It's just ridiculous um, considering its cost. Now, that being said, I have uh, played Interdimensional Zombie uh, in a lot of decks even since then. It still works in Conjure Leaps. Uh, and it, it works in Professor Brainswarm. You can check those decks out on YouTube. Uh, you really can use Interdimensional Zombie even in, in like a really aggressive um 
sort of like science or just brainy aggro deck. It really does work as they intended, but it certainly is not overall better. It was definitely overall better uh, as a 1-3. All things considered, though, this actually is a very good card. I'm going to be sticking it in A tier. Moving right along. This is an example of one of the cards in the game, Leprechaun Imp, that really just got nerfed into the Ice Age. Uh, this formerly was a 1-2-2 two, two, and shuffle two pots of gold into your deck. Now, if you get a pot of gold in your hand, it draws three cards. Uh, this was a ridiculously good card for... Um, this was an amazing card for Miracle decks. Now, a Miracle deck is where you're trying to control your opponent, stall for time, draw a ton of cards, and get a big miracle, like a big miracle play, like a big combo play. Uh, you, that can work together with, let's say, um, if teachers, where you play a bunch of teachers and a bunch of going virals. It would work with Stompadon to be able to draw a few cards. Uh, now that it only shuffles one pot of gold into your deck, this has become almost a useless, unusable card. The chances of getting that one pot uh, is so unlikely that really, it, otherwise, it's just a one cost 2-2 two, two imp, and there's such better cards usually uh, to run. They really nerfed a lot of the card draw, the, like the super efficient card draw, like Leprechaun Imp and Regifter, we'll see later on the zombie side, has made a lot of these sort of miracle-type decks. Uh, not as good. Uh, since this really is not a useful card anymore, I'm going to, but maybe it's okay. I'm really split between C and D tier. Uh, I have seen people, again, use this and get those pots of gold, but even in the decks, like the weird Stompathon decks, so you're running four of these and four regifters. Uh, it's really not, it's really still unlikely. You hardly ever see one of those pots of gold actually surface in your deck, so I'm going to be sticking this in D tier. Almost almost unplayable. That's the that's the reason. And we'll move right along to Mustache Waxer. So this is a very interesting deck. One of the most like I feel under viewed videos I've ever put up on YouTube is actually called Professor Mustache, or it's all about that mustache. You can find that on the um, on the Frame Up channel. I actually want to show you guys this deck when I'm explaining uh, exactly how good Mustache Waxer is because this is probably. Uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be the best deck for it. Do I even have Professor Mustache here? Uh, so here is the Professor Mustache aggro deck. This is really the best deck uh, for Mustache Waxer. It actually allows you to play like a lot of little cards onto the field on turn two. You can play a Mustache Waxer and a couple of Grave Robbers. The fact that it survives in the field and gives you a lot of little extra brains every single time you play a Bungie Plum or play your Quasar, it allows you to play the uh, Quasar Superpower much more efficiently. Uh, and also helps you ramp up a little bit to, let's say, a Mustache Monument uh, Viking, which is a uh, really, really good finisher in this deck. Uh, this is sort of the most useful deck for Mustache Waxer. I haven't found any other decks besides for this one Professor Brainstorm. You can try doing with you Giganticus, and you have, like, Frosty Mustache, but again, there's not... You really need there to be a lot of, like, one-cost mustaches to make this uh, worth it. Uh, and for that reason, since it is a solid card, but it's really kind of only good in just one deck, I'm going to put this in B tier. And let's move right along. Uh, this is a, another card that has been through a series of changes. It used to be a four-cost card. They tried it as a two-cost card. Now it has a one-cost card. This is actually uh, quite useful. I do run this in Professor Brainswarm, so you can check it out in that deck. Uh, the little, uh, it, it really is a decent just aggro card. You put it on the field every single time you play an environment, this will do a bonus attack. There are plenty of environments in the game. Um, let's say the Crazy class and Beastie class both have environments that can buff this up. Let's say like area uh, 22, you can also use it together with the Moon Z, Meteor Z environment. Uh, just to give that a little extra attack. Uh, it works in science decks. This gets buffed up by Drone Engineer. Uh, I would say overall, very solid card. Uh, I'm not going to say it's one of the best cards in the game. Now, I don't have a, an icon, actually, an updated icon for the one cost imp here for some reason. It is missing from the icons. Where the heck is it? Is it in the two cost? Oh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> I found it. <laughs> These icons that were on the wiki that I'm actually using are all like out of date, so it actually still says it's two cost. Obviously, it's a uh, it's a one cost two two. This is the neutron imp. Uh, I am going to be placing this. Where is this gonna go? Solid B. It's not quite as good as interdimensional zombie. I'm gonna give it a solid B. 
Moving right along. Paparazzi. Ugh. Where am I going to put paparazzi? This obviously was only good in a deck with a lot of little tricks. The problem with paparazzi is that it's such a high maintenance card. First of all, in terms of the deck building, if you don't have a lot of cheap tricks, uh, this is not going to be a good card. So you have to, you're just forced to shove a lot of cheap, cheap, cheap tricks just to be able to buff this up. And then the problem is it's also high maintenance because once you play a bunch of the cheap tricks, uh, in order to buff this up, then it just gets removed by Shamrock at any basically big removal card. You've invested so much into uh, the paparazzi that it really is, it, it really just doing? kind of dies Cardboard, too easily in the early and in the Zondar, late game. Easiest here. <laughs> Thank you, Icy Phoenix, for subscribing three months. Real appreciate it. Uh, since this is, again, this is an okay card for budget players, but it really is not very useful. Um, in for late game players maybe you can play stick this in a trickster deck and since you're anyway using a lot of cheap tricks it just puts a threat on the field usually when you play paparazzi before the trick stage even comes into fruition uh this is just going to get removed off the field and for that reason pretty crappy i'm going to put this in c tier moving right along okay this is actually one of the best cards in the entire game easy easy claps putting it right into s tier now, in order to understand why Teleport is so good, you have to understand a really important concept of PvZ Heroes, and that is Last Say. Having Last Say means you have the ability to look at your opponent's play, and you have that final uh, reaction uh, of that turn to your opponent. And this really, plants usually have Last Say, and that's why plant cards, if you notice, plant cards typically have less stats than zombies, because plants are typically better because they can be played reactively to the zombies. Zombies play first, then the plants are able to either front it with whatever minion they want, they can play in a different lane if they're going aggro. Uh, teleport really reverses that role and allows the zombies to be played in reaction to the plants. Uh, the fact that it costs one, one brain is good because you don't want to be playing, like this actually I think used to cost zero, which was ridiculous. Um, you want, you know, even a, a zombie that costs one less uh, in reacting to the plants is usually good enough if you have last say to, uh, to accompany it and you're teleporting this in. This also does draw you a card, which makes it cycle through your deck. It's just an amazing, amazing card. Easy S tier. And uh, we are going to move right along. This is an especially good card um, with, like, a lot of late game finishers. A lot of big cards, if you stick them onto the field, they really just get removed very easily by any kind of big removal in Shamrock. I hate Shamrock. Um, and stuff like that. This really negates that problem. There's a lot of cards in the game which are only playable with Teleport. Let's say like Zombot and um, Gondola and even Trickster and Valkyrie are uh, really hard to play if you don't have either um, Teleport or Mustache Monument. We'll get into those in just a second. Moving right along, we have Beam Me Up. Oof. Beam Me Up is a, an extremely solid card. Again, this is really just a 2 cost 2 3, but it has last say. It also is a trick, so it helps out your tricksters. Uh, just being a 2 cost 2 3 last say minion is so good at controlling. Uh, you can use this to basically counter anything the plants play on turn 2. It'll counter most things. Uh, and even in the late game, this can be used just as a little bit of extra damage, a little way to proc the block. Um, it can be used to just be stick in front of one of your opponent's big minions, just prevent damage that turn. So essentially, this could end up healing you by preventing damage for, you know, six, seven, eight damage uh, when played. This is an extremely, extremely solid card. I I'm actually debating whether to put this in, in S tier or A tier because this could, this is such a, like an auto include card in almost every brainy. There's never wrong to put beam me up in sometimes you just don't have room for it but if you did beam me up would never be a bad decision uh because it's it's oh man i i i'm seriously considering putting this in s tier i know the chat's voting for a it's gotta at least be a beam me up is such an underrated card it's so good because it doesn't actually go into every single deck, it is part of Valkyrie Hybrid, a really important part of Valkyrie Hybrid because it is both a minion and a trick. It has that sort of um, attribute. It's so high A tier. I'm going to say really high A tier. Absolutely solid card. And again, there's almost no deck that putting Beam Me Up uh, is a bad thing. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it in A. 
Moving right along, we have Call Me On My Cell Phone. This is card is too expensive. It just does not have enough stats. It's nice having cards that can sort of cycle through your deck like this for miracles. You know, you're trying to really get a combo. But again, as a zombie, this is not a good card. As a plant, this actually would be a very good plant. Because you could just spend turn two. Again, like I explained before, last say, you'd be able to use this to block whatever your opponent played on turn two to stall for time and also draw a card. But again, as a zombie, this is just going to be sitting and usually just pinging your opponent's block meter for one and actually giving them a lot of free superpowers. <laughs> so actually giving you the one card. This is almost an unplayable card, almost never put it in any deck. And for that reason, we are going to be putting it right in the get that weak stuff out of here tier in F tier. Moving right along. Uh, okay, here's a little gem. Cosmic Scientist. Now, this doesn't. This is actually very similar to Cell Phone Zombie. It has one extra health. Who cares? Uh, the main thing is that it has Bullseye, and it always conjures you a guy with Bullseye. Uh, the Bullseye ability makes it a lot better because, again, it's not going to be pinging your opponent's block meter and charge, charging that up. So that's super important. This does have some science synergy. It gives you another science card. This is particularly good with, like, Hugh Giganticus when you combine it with Dr. Spacetime because that will make this conjured card cost less and also has the value of bullseye it, it's still not a great card because it has extremely low stats i think if this was like a 222 this would be a much better card it still wouldn't even be that good <laughs> but uh it, it doesn't do a lot but it is it but it's just not bad hmm. i'm gonna say because it's quite useful in a couple of decks but not very useful in any deck. I'm gonna put it in C tier. Moving right along. Cryobrain, oh, okay. This is a card I probably, here's the problems with Cryobrain, and I admit I might not really know the uses of this card. I know like there's this weird Immortitia Teleport Zombot deck that Cryobrains are really important, so I'm still trying to get that to work, but the problem with this card is how much tempo and card advantage you lose when you play it. Uh, if your opponent plays anything on the board on turn two and you respond with Cryo Brain, now you're going to be getting a lot of extra brain. Every single turn, really, you're going to have one extra brain. So first of all, the one extra brain is not necessarily going to be usable. Like you're not always going to have exactly four brains to spend on three and then exactly five to spend on four. You very often you anyway have an extra brain. So it's not like guaranteed value for every single turn for the rest of the game, even though theoretically it could be that way. Uh, this is mostly used as a RAM card if you have super late game cards and you want to play them earlier, like Teleport Zombot or some weird, really expensive strategy. That's usually not the right way to play PvZ Heroes anyway, to rely on super late game cards. You want to try really anyway getting your finishers out efficiently on turn six and seven, uh, even in control decks. It's not a great... It's not like a <laughs> it's not like a great ramp card. I feel like if Cryobrain at least drew you a card, uh, it would be a lot better to like sort of have that cycle. But you're you end up being first of all minus turn two. You didn't do anything. Plus you're minus a card in your hand, uh, which sort of is a huge huge problem. I think this is useful in a couple decks, but it's usually a piece of trash garbage. I think I'm just gonna put this in C tier since again it is it, let's say it's more useful than Leprechaun, but it's really not usable in a lot. I could almost put this in D, but I think I think I think I, I'm putting it in C almost benefit of the doubt wise, just because I do think that I am probably not I haven't found like the full potential of this card and it might actually exist. And I do know that like in the teleport and same in teleport zombot deck, this is an important card, so uh, we'll leave it in C. I think it fits there. Alright, moving right along. We need a leap easy S tier. Uh, I'm actually going to put this in A. It's an extremely solid card. The fact that it draws a card is very, very good. Like, if it didn't draw a card, it would it would be undervalued. Sort of like what I explained. It would give you card disadvantage, like Cryobrain. Uh, you can actually base entire decks. Of course, there's Conjure Leap. You can look that up on YouTube. It's called Best Video of 2018. That was just amazing. We found Evolutionary Leap to be super... Um, Super, super good in Conjure Leap in a teleport, uh, like Rust Bolt King deck where you start teleporting in your kings, turning things into knights, and then this will automatically turn every seven drop into either an Octo Zombie or a Plank Walker on eight, and then a Zombie on nine and a Trickster on ten. I, I like the fact that you have such solid leapable cards, especially the turn nine Zombot, uh, really makes this card into such a gem. 
Uh, I'm not putting an S tier because it's not, I'm not going to say it's like the, it's only useful again in some decks, but in those decks, it's obviously really, really good. Uh, you can even just use this to buff your, like your interdimensional zombie it turns into a three, you turn that into a four, into a five. Uh, it works obviously very well together with transformation station. We will be getting to that uh, in just a second. Now, here is lurch for lunch. Uh, this card probably would have been an S tier. Um, if it weren't for the invent of Mustache Monument. Now, this was a set one card. This was so essential in basically every Brainy deck to have your bonus attacks. It doesn't matter if it's going to be for a for a Valk deck where you need the, the Valk to do an extra bonus attack or you're teleporting in your tricksters and use, using bonus attacks. Uh, it's really a great finisher. It costs two. Uh, the problem is Mustache Monument has basically outclassed it. It seems like this is almost always better, uh, unless you you have like Blob, which obviously won't uh, work with Mustache Monument. I'll explain Blob in a little bit. Mustache Monument really is better with Valve, better with Trickster. It's better with, you know, Viking. The cards that you really just want to do that extra bonus attack, it seems like Mustache Monument. It, the reason Mustache Monument is better is because you... The problem with with this card the weakness of lurch for lunch is that you're again it's a zombie card which means you're sticking your zombies on the field and maybe you'll be one of the the one you really want to do that lurch uh will survive and then you'll have uh the lurch for lunch but you know the, your opponent can always remove any minion you play off the field mustache monument you don't have that problem you just play mustache monument and you immediately play the zombie on it and it does the bonus attack so uh this is mostly good if you're teleporting in the deck you're teleporting in minions it is very it is fine it's good in tempo it's never a bad idea to have a couple lurch for lunches in your deck i also would put this in a tier i think just because it's outclassed by mustache monument i am going to be sticking this in b tier but again it's a solid card and it's 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 very good in a lot of decks just <laughs> just not as good as mustache Moving right along. Pool Shark. This is a card I've hardly found any uses for. I did make a Professor Brainstorm, like a Bullseye Aggro deck, or I don't know if it was Brainstorm or Super Brains. Uh, you can sort of teleport this in. Again, this is a lot of, a lot of damage. Uh, bullseye damage for a two-cost card. It's a really good aggro card, but um, again, the problem is with any zombie that just has stats is it, it just gets removed it only has one health it's so easy that i mean every removal card in the game is going to be able to counter pool shark so uh, it's kind of only good if you teleport it in teleporting in do bonus text it's fine it actually is good in a couple decks um it is a viable card so i'm going to be putting it in c tier let's say low c tier all right moving right along we got teleportation zombie so this is very similar to teleport this is the minion version of teleport uh, and I am going to be sticking this up in uh, S tier because this is seriously one of the best cards in the game. So wh when do you run Teleport and when do you run Teleportation Zombie in your deck? Uh, they're very similar. Again, they just do that same thing. You're able to get your finishers on the field without your opponent answering them and uh, be able to cause, cause ruckus. Teleportation Zombie is also good at teleporting instead of just finishers, a lot of like small cards. So the advantage of teleportation zombie is that it can be used multiple times. So especially if you are trying to, you know, control your opponent by teleporting in, let's say deadly imps. I have a deck with, uh, I think it was huge giganticus where you teleport in deadly imps and you control your opponent. Uh, you can find them the huge giganticus playlist on fry em up. Um, or if you are uh, teleporting in, let's say you're trying to do a bunch of teachers and they're going viral. Not a very good strategy, but it, it, you can mul you can do multiple times with the teleportation zombie. And even if you're going for big minions, you teleport in a big guy that costs seven. The next turn, if they don't remove the teleportation zombie off the field, um, uh, you'll be able to get, get a teleport in for an eight cost card. Uh, the problem with teleportation zombie is that it can be answered. So when you play this on the field, any grave removal card will just get this off. And especially if you need... You really need to teleport in your minions in order to win. Teleportation Zombie is actually a less reliable option than just teleport. There's almost nothing in the deck that can, in the game that counters teleport except for, except for Brainana is like the one card that will prevent uh, you from playing teleport. So um, there again, there are there are a lot of instances where you just run four teleports and four teleportation zombies. You can teleport this in. Uh, and then wait till next turn and actually be able to teleport in, let's say, your seven cost card on turn seven instead of having to wait till turn eight to teleport in using a teleport. Uh, overall, it is never a bad thing to, <laughs> to run in a deck. It's actually one of the more most powerful cards in the game, again, because it flips the advantage, the last say 
uh, to the zombie side, and we'll just leave it at that. Moving right along, we have Transformation Station. So I'm going to stick this up in A tier together with the Leap. It's super, super good uh, in Leap decks. It's a very similar card, obviously, but it's an environment. So it covers your opponent's environments, but has the weakness that it can also get covered. The fact this is a zombie environment, though, means you're basically always going to get at least one leap out of this, uh, which makes it super, super good. Make sure you do not play this on the field and then start playing minions into it. You have to make sure you have to play this onto a lane where you already have a minion uh, in order to make sure you at least get that one leap or else your opponent's going to cover this and you're going to just lose a card for free. Moving right along, we have the Zombot Drone Engineers. This, oh, this actually used to be um, a, a two cost one three, and it was pretty weak. There, you know, really, uh, there's just a lot of things that even opponent puts like a two three in front of it. It'll answer this in a couple of turns. Uh, now that's a one four. This is an extremely, extremely strong card. I would really suggest budget players uh, focusing on science decks because they're really, really strong. Uh, any uh, cheap science cards you have, you can use together with the Drone Engineer. Uh, if you have Teleportation Zombie, that's great, but you can com combine this with your, um, really any science cards that have a decent amount of health. It'll keep them growing, and uh, like Wormhole Gatekeeper, you can even use this together uh, with Electrician, which will, again, this will the Electrician will Howdy. either buff itself or buff the Drone Engineer up. Thank you so much, Saberbomb, 29 months, really appreciate it. Uh, and the big finish in, in a, any science deck is going to be Gadget Scientist. This will make all of your science cards do bonus attacks. Uh, I really think this is a super solid card, particularly for budget players, and I'm actually going to be putting this in A tier. Uh, you can actually use this in some top tier decks, and it's extremely good too. But I'm, I'm really valuing it in A tier mostly, um, mostly, mostly because of how just overall good stats is, especially for budget players. Let's keep it going. Oh, man. So Brain Vendor, this is a really hard card to rate because it, it, sometimes this is useless and sometimes this is one of the best cards um, in the entire game because you you don't want to just be throwing this into a deck and say, hey, look, it's a three cost two one. That's not, it's a, sorry, it's a, it's a free two one because you spend three brains and you get three brains back. That's not a good option because again, spending on turn three, you can't play this on turn one or turn two. So on turn three and on, just having a, a card disadvantage, you spend an entire card just to put a two one on the field is not a good strategy. Uh, but you do have to combine this. If you combine this with other strats, it uh, becomes very good. First of all, uh, with either of the leap cards, this will be a three. You can play this on turn three and then leap it into a four cost card. You even have one extra brain besides for that to spend that turn. So that's a super efficient. Same thing with Transformation Station. Uh, this does work very well with, this is a decent card with Nebula. Uh, because if you have a Nebula on the field and you play Brain Vendor, you'll actually gain two extra brains and be able to play a more expensive card this turn. Um, it works very well with Blob because it gives you those, again, none of these Nebula and Blob, they're not really top tier strats anymore. Um, overall, overall good card. It's not, it's, 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 it's usually horrible, but in some decks it is quite good. And for that reason, I'm going to be putting this in B tier. Moving right along. Duck Stash. So Duckstash, I would say, is really only going to be good in a Mustache Synergy deck. The fact it is... It sort of is a versatile card because a three cost three two, which it'll usually draw something, um, makes it good. It works with mustache with mustache waxer because then you'll have an extra brain that turn. You can also evolve this to get a five four. Now you have to be careful with the mustache evolution. First of all, it only can evolve from mustache cards. You really have to be have you have to have a mustache on the field for this to work. Also, once you turn two cards into a 5-4, essentially, it can just be answered by Shamrocket super easily for the exact cost of this card, which is three. So you got to be really careful when evolving. You really want to do that if you're anyway ahead on the field and you have, you know, four full four, four you have four full lanes. That's when Duck Stash becomes good. Um, because this card is really only useful in a couple and really just like one mustache deck, and you don't even really need it in mustache decks. Uh, I'm going to be putting it in C tier, and we'll just move right along to Electrician. Here we go. I'm just checking the stream. Everything's fine. Here's Electrician. So uh, this is basically, in my opinion, a worse version of Lurch for Lunch. It is a Lurch for Lunch that can be answered. Uh, it can be removed by a gravestone. 
Um, you can play this on the field with the hopes that you're going to have a big guy that you want to do the bonus attack. Again, the more damage you do a bonus attack, the more valuable the card is. So if you play this together and you have, let's say, a huge card with seven or eight attack on the field, so you, you, you play it, you hope that guy's going to survive, but usually the guy gets removed. That's the problem with Electrician. It's a lot better to have, let's say, Lurch for Lunch in your deck, because then if your guy gets removed, don't play Lurch for Lunch, and you'll actually save this as a card. A 2-2 two -two that does a bonus attack is not a good idea. Um, this does work quite well with Drone Engineer. There's um, You can actually use this uh, with Immortitia. I do have some decks, uh, you can look up the Immortitia Secret Agent decks, you'll find one that has Electrician in it, where you actually use Secret Agent, which scoops this card back up in your hand and gives it 3-3, three, three, and then you can play it on the field as like a little mini trickster where it pops up and then automatically does 5 damage bonus attack, which is obviously very good for a 3 cost card. A little bit of a high maintenance strategy. Again, this does, I'm, I can't say this is horrible because it does, it's fine with Drone Engineer because it is a science card. Also, just making whatever your one or two cost card do that bonus attack and remove whatever the plant in front of it that the plant player played in front of it. It gives you a lot of tempo because it basically makes it that you have more, a lot more stats on the field than your opponent, especially if your science cards are growing in attack every single time they do damage. Uh, because it's really outclassed by Lurch for Lunch and only useful in a few decks, but it does have uses. We're sticking it in C tier together with everything else. Moving right along. Uh, here's Fun Dead Razor. So this is a, this is a really slow card draw card. Um, I could even imagine a card like this costing two would actually open up a lot of like Miracle decks, cards that you know decks that really require you to draw a lot of cards in order to work. Uh, this does buff your tricksters if you have very specific win conditions uh, in a deck like, you know, you need your to certain late game cards. This is a great way to get that. This is an overall very good card still at three. Um, drawing cards, by the way, which are in your deck is always better than conjuring random cards. We're going to find that that is serious, a serious flaw uh, in a lot of... Um, in a lot of, in a lot of look, other card draw, let's say, in the Brainy class. We'll get to those later. Because this is uh, a, a part of a lot of top tier decks, it's not it's not part of a lot because not a lot of decks really require card draw. Again, you lose three brains when you play this. So you lose if your opponent it plays a tempo play on turn three and you go find Dead Razor, you're screwed uh, because that's going to be a lot of tempo that's going to be really hard to make up for afterwards. Um, I am going to put this as a solid B tier because, again, it is an, uh, an important part of a lot of decks. It's overall an okay card, a decent card, uh, but it really doesn't make it to A because uh, it's a little bit slow. All right, let's keep it going. Here's Gentleman Zombie. I, I Gentleman Zombie... <laughs> Gentleman Zombie is... Oh man, where are we going to put this? It, it has similar uses, let's say, to like Brain Vendor. You actually lose a brain playing Gentleman Zombie. This costs three and only gives you two back. It's supposed to Brain Vendor that costs three and gives you three back. So it's not exactly a way to ramp up and gain extra brains. If this can survive on the field for multiple turns, that's when you really start getting your value of getting plus two brains every turn. The problem is, again, on the highest level of the game, your opponent will almost have some, almost always have something to deal with the gentleman zombie. He only has two, two health. If this at least had like three health or even four health, this would actually be a much better card, but it's kind of just too easy to remove. It can also be removed by a grave buster. So if you're trying to ramp and you do that, uh, you can't play this on the field and leap. It's really just overall super meh. I'm almost considering putting this in D tier because there's <laughs> very, very few decks that this is actually good. Sorry, Gentleman Zombie, you're going in with Leprechaun Imp. Card that maybe looks like it has a lot of potential, but it seriously doesn't. All right, moving right along. We have Kite Flyer. This is, a, this is actually a really decent card draw card. This is actually more efficient, in my opinion, than Fun Dead Razor, uh, because it at least puts a minion on the field. Now, you don't really want to be pinging your opponent's block meter that much, because it really gives them cards, but this can, again, draw cards over multiple multiple turns you can really stick this in front of one of your opponent's minions just so you're at least chipping away at the health of one of their minions and blocking damage so you're not dying that's the advantage of this over funded razor now the advantage of funded razor is the fact it's a trick uh you, you know you can only you you just play sort of just play funded razor again was the card before that draws two cards you can sort of just play funded razor when you're not in trouble if you sort of stick kite flyer onto the field and the opponent has an amazing turn three play you're gonna get really really behind 
Um, this is good with science. This is very good for budget players if you want to if you want a deck that uh, if you have any deck that needs card draw. I would say this is a little bit better than the cards we have in C tier. It's about the same level as the B, so we'll stick this in B. Moving right along. Do we have a lot of people here for the stream? For the uh, the last time we had over 500 people watching the live stream here. Today we have uh, almost 500. Thank you everyone for joining us in the live Twitch stream. And thanks for watching this on YouTube. The first tier video actually was like the number one video on the Frame Up channel uh, for the last few months. So I uh, really appreciate everyone's constant support. All right, moving right along, we are going to do Nebula. This is a card that has, oh, that has uh, undergone a lot of changes. Now, the original stats of this card, it was a two-cost environment that when you play a zombie here, it gives you three extra brains. <laughs> it took me a really long time, I admit, to see how broken and overpowered uh, Medula Nebula was then because it just allowed you to ramp up to Bad Moon Rising, to late game cards, to just swarm the field with way too many stats. It just used to give way too much value, especially because, again, this is a zombie environment. Zombie environments are always better because they played last save. They can't be covered that turn by the plant, so you can really stick Nebula on the field and you guarantee are guaranteed are able to at least get that first value from that first minion you stick into it uh, the next turn. Now, then the Medula Nebula turns into a three cost card that would give you three brains. Pretty sure that was the stat. It was three, three costs, three brains. And they still felt that was too powerful because everyone was still uh, running Bad Moon Rising. Bad Moon Rising decks were basically um, dominating the meta. Uh, it was really easy to get a lot of brains uh, from Medula Nebula using um, using the uh, Buried Treasure was actually the probably the number one combo because again you would stick this stick Buried Treasure into it. This will give this will give you uh, it costs one and gives you let's say now two brains or it used to give you three brains which was ridiculous. Um, and then you can actually play another cheap guy, let's say a brain vendor on top of the buried treasure to actually use the nebula many times. That is the best way of using nebulas together with buried treasure and brain vendor and maybe Swabby and Bad Moon Rising to ramp up to those. Uh, Bad Moon Rising, we will get to later. This is a card that uh, will turn all of your little guys into super big guys. Now that nebula they felt that was too strong so they made nebula three cost card that gives you only two brains and this is really a very underpowered card in its current state uh because the, it's an expensive environment three is a lot for an environment really two is like par uh and how much you especially because there's some really good one one cost environments in this game uh as well but this is again it just gets covered too easily by the plants by any plant environment they even cost one less it can be covered the next turn also really just doesn't give you a lot of brains this is useful in some decks we still run this in baboon rising decks and ramp but it just really doesn't do uh what it used to i i really would have loved to see this card become a two cost give you two brains because then at least it wouldn't be such a huge investment of three brains for just for an environment that just gives you two brains the next turn it's still useful in some decks it, overall, you can see this actually says two cost card because that was the original stats uh, of the Nebula. I think because this is only useful now in a couple of decks, it's okay. Uh, it's either low B or, or high C tier. It's probably better than the C cost, the C's. It's probably about the B's. It's, it's comparable, let's say, to Mustache Waxer and Kite Flyer. I'll, I'll stick this in B just because of how this tier list is going overall. Uh, and again, it is it is, it is is useful and it is very, very fun in a lot of decks. Just be very careful when you're using Nebula. Uh, don't just throw this in as the environment in your deck. You have to make sure you're only using this in decks that really need those couple extra brains and have a very clear way, like with brain vendors, of ramping up to a clear win condition. Uh, and it'll actually help you win the game instead of just being a random environment. I'm gonna say low, low, low B tier. Moving, man, I can't believe I have Nebula and, and Fun Dead Razor in the same tier though. Like Fun Dead Razor would be like way over here and Nebula would be way the heck down. It's so weird even having those in the same in the same tier. This is better than Cryo Brain though. Yeah, it's just really low, really low B tier. All right, let's keep it going. We got Moonwalker, oh man. This is a three cost four four. Again, the main problem is it's a zombie. If this was a plant with the exact same stats, this would be so good. But any dry zombies are just bad because again, the it gives the plant an opportunity to react to this. 
Uh, they could just ignore it and put their own, you know, like card, which will grow on the field, like a muscle sprout or a triceratops, something that will eventually end up having more value. And then you're stuck with that growing on the field. Uh, this does have a lot of really good stats, though. Oh, man. I just don't feel like this fits into a lot of decks. Like for budget players and you're running like a science deck, I would suggest using Moonwalker. Uh, it's a it's a good it's just a good solid fat stat card that again it's not it's also not limited just to the heights lane uh, like chimney sweep you can actually get that value when it's played extra two two when it's played in an environment but again it is limited in that way if you don't have an environment to play this into uh, it's not very you got a three cost four four that you can play anywhere would be a great like aggro card that's difficult to remove uh, this one it is limited again as an aggro card i'm gonna stick this in c since it really just there's a lot better cards usually to be running in the three slot than moonwalker but again it's decent for budget moving right along oh here's mustache monument so i explained mustache monument before this is the best most efficient way of doing bonus attacks in this game uh most notably you want to use mustache monument together with uh trickster that will make the trickster do two attacks of six damage which is 12 total which is overpowered you want to use this together in professor brainstorm which is the one who controls both the crazy and brainy class together with valkyrie when this gains a lot of attack this will basically finish off your opponent on turn seven mustache monument uh valkyrie um it's also very good let's say in its class uh to be used with the unthawed viking as a notable combo uh, you, you you definitely have to have that really big sort of finisher in order for this to be good um in order for mustache mustache monument but it, it really is the most efficient way of doing bonus attacks you can even like use it there's weird ways of using this I, I i've even found um you can use the the mustache monument together with the beastie class with immortition we actually have a deck that does that i don't remember what it's called on youtube uh but you can use it with stellar bounty hunter which will then have frenzy and do a bunch of attacks and draw you a bunch of cards or even with uh cards like vampire which will again doing immediate attacks combos really really well with a lot of cards I i'm getting i'm not going to say this is quite as good as teleporter teleportation zombie but nonetheless i am going to put this in s tier because um <laughs> it's really one of the best cards in the game and it is uh, a really really important part of a lot of a lot of like the top top tier um zombie decks notably uh valkyrie hybrid really really good all right let's move right along Mustache Monument is also just one of these cards that I really did not understand the value. It's actually used to cost two, and uh, they nerfed it to make it cost three. Something I really just did not understand the value of. Uh, just the fact, again, that you don't need a teleport. You just have a quick way of doing a bonus attack uh, together with one of your big guys. It's just it, it's just the, the most effective way of winning this game is just by launching huge amounts of damage at your opponent as a finisher, not giving them a chance to react to you. I could have put this in A. I'm, I'm going to keep it in S because, I, again, it's 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 an undeniable top, top, top tier card in some of the best decks in the game. Probably mostly because of Valtrickster Hybrid. So, yeah. All right, here's Regifting Zombie. We need a we need a Thank you so much, Dreamline Virus. Really appreciate you. Welcome to the Frime Lane. Now, uh, what am I going to say about Regifting Zombie? This card actually used to cost two, and it was pretty decent. This is part of the big nerfs that they, you know, got rid of, like, the Miracle decks, where you draw too many cards, and it was working too well with Stomp It On. I really don't like this as a three-cost card. Uh, this is a important part of um, Professor Brainswarm. You can find that on YouTube, which is, uh, you know, it's really, really, it's really good at just a, a really efficient way of drawing two cards. Usually the problem with Regifter, again, is a dry zombie. So those cards that you draw are not going to be usable until the next turn. The plant player, the cards that it draws, um, they're going to be able to use those to react to this immediately. And sometimes you're going to be giving them, uh, you're, you're basically giving them a head start on the two card advantage. It's, not, it's just actually giving you a disadvantage. Again, you can teleport this in. This can be used as a miracle card in some decks. It is really good in Val in in um again it is really good in Professor Brainstorm where you're just swarming with a lot of little minions and um this will buff your unlifes to the party by one one when you play it uh just because the card is just it, it's really not it's intrinsically not a very good card and again it's only good in a couple of decks. It's not even necessary in Professor Brainstorm. I am going to put it in C tier. 
Sad regifter. Obviously, if this back when it was, you can see over here the icon even says uh, that it's a two cost card. I certainly would have put this uh, much higher tier when it cost two. But now just for three, it's just too slow. It's just really too slow. And it's also actually almost always outclassed by Wormhole Gatekeeper, which actually has a lot of really good stats. Two five, very difficult to remove and has a very similar ability. Um, this is just a much, much easier card to stay, keep stable on the field. As opposed to putting a three two, it's just too easily removed. All right, moving right along. Here's Rocket Science. I explained in the Guardian tier list video why Rocket Science is a very fair and balanced, very good card as opposed to Sham Rocket. You can go and uh, look that up. Uh, I have a video dedicated to that called Why Sham Rocket is a Dumb Card. Uh, Rocket Science, on the other hand, so again, this is a, it's a liability. You have to pass three brains. You have to not play three brains worth of potential zombies in order to maybe your opponent is going to play a minion on the field that is rocket scienceable. Nonetheless, this is a very efficient removal card. This really just removes a lot of big plants. Uh, only weakness are big plants like Potato Saurus. This is also, again, just a very weak card against uh, decks that don't have a lot of four attack guys uh, for its win condition, like the Cantaleth decks, mo most notably. This is a really, really bad card to run into into Pecanal decks. Very solid, very good removal card though overall. It's never bad to have a couple of these in that deck. I'm gonna put this in A tier. It's really never, it's really never bad to, to it's really never a bad card to have in your deck nonetheless. Uh, I think it's pretty balanced. All right. All right, moving right along, we're going to Trick or Treater. Now, this card used to be just a dry zombie, non-gravestone, uh, and it was horrible. Then they buffed it, actually, and gave it a gravestone. It's so hard to, like, say which cards are good better when they're gravestones and not. It really depends on the use, but I think the fact that a 3-cost 2-3 three is really easily removed off the field, a 3-cost gravestone is a lot less easily removed off the field, they don't know what's inside. Uh, they're going to need a Grave Buster just to remove it. Uh, it makes this card a lot better. It gives you, they also buffed um, treats, which, you know, these treats usually be just horrible pieces of garbage card. They actually made uh, treats a lot better. Uh, it'll either give you a one cost, one three uh, buff card, or a two cost, give a guy three attack and one health. Um, I, I'm not going to say this is useful. This would be a lot better if when you play your first trick each turn, it would just draw you any card instead of only giving you treats. Usually getting cards that are in your deck. Uh, are better uh, are better than conjuring sort of just random uh, random things. You don't really need treats in a lot of deck. There's a couple things that buffing buffing it up. This is okay with Doctor Space Time because then those treats even cost one less. It's just overall meh. <laughs> it's uh, really hard to find a deck where it's worth running this instead of just running the treats outright in order to conjure them after the fact. And for that reason, but it is okay in a couple decks. We'll just put it in C tier just with everything else. I think C tier is going to be the most, the most common one. This is fine. Moving right along. Okay, here is Wormhole Gatekeeper. Uh, this is, again, you don't want to be conjuring too many, giving or drawing too many cards for your opponent. This does have ridiculous stats for a three cost card. Two five bullseye. I don't even think this needed bullseye, honestly. Uh, the, the deck that actually comes to mind that this is very good in is uh, Immortitia OTK Cat Lady. You can go look that up uh, on the Fry Em Up channel. Um, really good stats. This is fine to be putting in a science deck. You play Drone Engineer on turn two, and then you stick this on turn three, and there's just so much stats on the field. Your opponent's not going to have any idea what to do with it. Uh, again, this is a decent way of drawing cards. Definitely better than Regifter. Uh, it draws you more and more, so it's good for Miracle decks. I can't say it fits into... Too many decks. Uh, I certainly don't want to put this in A tier because then it would be up with uh, a lot of really, really useful cards. I would say it's basically on the same level as uh, cards like Neutron Imp and Kite Flyer and Funded Razor. Funded Razor sometimes is good again for trickster decks. You want to be drawing those cards using a trick. You also don't, if you need the card draw, it's not a reliable card draw card because again, this can be removed on turn three, let's say by Hammer. Um, I don't really know. There's not a lot of cards on the plant side that removes it on turn three. But again, in later turns, it certainly can, if you're playing it after turn three and turn four and five, then there's a lot of cards in the in the game that remove it, like Shrinking Violet and such. Overall, but again, B means it's a really solid card that is useful in a lot of decks, and uh, we'll just leave it there. It's actually perfect. All right. Here is Blob. This used to be the best card, the best card in this. 
basically the best card in the game. They used to be, you can find it actually from 2017, I believe. Uh, we had the Super Brains OTK Blob deck, it was ridiculous. Now this gains brain uh, one attack for every single brain uh, you got this turn. This used to have Bullseye, and Bullseye is actually not the biggest nerf that Zomblob received. The main nerf it received uh, was the nerfing of cards like Nebula, which this used to give you a lot of extra brains. Now, again, this just becomes such a liability to have in your deck. This was one of your main sources of gaining brains, where you would be playing uh, Blob together with Brain Vendor and Nebula. It used to give you a total of six. Now it only gives you a total of five, and it's just really expensive to play the... Um, uh, really, just the Nebula is, is, is just expensive as a three-cost card. Uh, the other cards that actually made Blob get nerfed is um, Leprechaun and Regifting Zombie, notably. Because, again, in a, in a deck where you're just trying to find that one big turn where you teleport in your Blob and use bonus attacks, which essentially is the best way of using this card, uh, you need a very specific set, uh, a combo set, in order to pull that off. So you need your Nebula and your Brain Vendor and your Teleport and your Blob and your bonus attack, in which case you have this amazing, amazing one-turn kill uh, strat. Uh, but nowadays, again, the card draw, efficient card draw like Regifting Zombie, uh, these to just draw you a ton and ton of cards. It's just got nerfed down to being almost unusable. Again, the fact that it's not, it's not Bullseye anymore also does cause problems because you usually need to do two Blob attacks, which means your opponent really has to have an empty block meter in order for this to be guaranteed lethal with a teleport blob. And again, that is with a huge combo of cards that you're ramping up a lot of brains. This deck is still okay. I, I really should bring this back, a modern version of the Zomblob. I guess I'll do it with Super Brains because he has those uh, bonus attack for his superpower. I am going to stick Zomblob. I think because it is still a very powerful card. And Blob decks are still okay. They're just a shadow of their former self. I'll stick it in B tier. Since, again, it is it is a super, super powerful card in one, in basically one deck. <laughs> Moving right along. I, I really do want to bring back a more uh, modern version of, of Blob, though. I think it's still actually pretty good. All right, we got Drum Major. Uh, this is just a big, fat mess of stats. It's a 4 cost 4-4. Four, four. Everyone, of course, uses this in their very first Super Brains deck right when they start the game, but uh, on the highest level of the game, this has absolutely no place at all. Not in dancing decks, not in sports decks. It just does not do enough. When you have a zombie again, this is a card which suffers heavily from the, you know, being a dry zombie plague. Uh, that the fact that the plants can always answer this, can have the second say, you play this on turn four, there are so many better things that the plants then can play on turn four. They're just going to outvalue this in your game. Uh, it really has no no use on <laughs> the highest level of the game at all. Easy F. All right, moving right along, we have Mad Chemist. <sighs> This card is not good. It, this has gotten buffed. I think it used to be like a 3-4 and they made it have a little extra health. It doesn't matter. This card has two problems. First of all, you can't draw cards with this on turn 4. You can only draw cards with this on turn 5. Because in order for this to draw cards, you need to play another, another uh, trick that turn. Second of all, it only conjures one trick per turn. I don't know why they put that limit on this. I think this would be cool if it was a limitless card. But you're, you're spending 4 cost 3, 5 mess stats, and it's in order to spend maybe draw one card, maybe this will be removed by the time uh, it's able to draw anything, in which case it's just a, just a really piece of trash garbage. Uh, the, the main problem is, is that it's conjuring a random trick instead of drawing a card in your deck. Drawing a... There's just a lot of garbage tricks. This can start just giving you cryo brains when you don't need them. It can start giving you like these really expensive tricks that you're never going to use. You get garg fees from it. You get, it's just so unreliable. You know, if this would draw you a card in your actual deck, it would be better. Um, you can do some things where you combine this with Dr. Spacetime so the conjure tricks cost less, but it, it's really an almost completely unplayable card. I'm actually sticking Mad Chemist in D tier because it's not as good as the cards that we have in C tier. Uh, this is a really, really big mess of card. I would have loved if this did not have the limit, that you can actually play a whole bunch of little tricks, and it would almost be the, um, oh, there's this Hearthstone card that basically draws a card every single time you play a spell. I forget what it's called. It's the five-cost goblin-looking guy. Auctioneer. 
I really don't think that on the um, on the highest level of the game, Mad Chemist really deserves to be in any deck. So that's why I'm putting it in D, even though it's just an okay card. Moving right along. That's right. Chemist is a D, guys. <laughs> Live with it. Here's Mountain Climber. Ugh. This is a 4-4-4, four, 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 so it's basically a drum major that has Bullseye. But um, it only works when it's on heights. It doesn't even work in an environment like Moonwalker. It's just such a bad piece of garbage. I actually wish this card did not exist. Did I get a Soul Patch impression? Soul Patch impression. Thank you so much. Toasty. Thank you for nine months. Holy moly with that. Uh, I, I actually wish this card just please, this would be in the please delete tier if we were running one for, um, <laughs> for, if we were running one for this class because the only thing that this happens is you leap your three cost cards and then turn to stupid mountain climber and they just get removed because it only has two two inside your freaking transformation station. That's really the only time you ever see mountain climber <laughs> is when it's just a failed leap. Get that weak stuff out of here. I wish I could, should I make a lower tier here? No, I'll just leave it like that. Here's Parasol Zombie. Parasol Zombie is a really good card and a really horrible card. It really depends. The untrickable is a, you know, in fact, it is untrickable and it gives the two guys next to it untrickable is, is actually a really strong ability, if not for the fact that once you start getting into turn four, five, and six, there's a lot of plants that don't rely on tricks in order to remove zombies off the field. There's just plants like Cop Cannon, Threaded Chomper are all just really good answers to Paracel Zombie. Um, this does, you know, prevent you from getting Shamrocketed and stuff. There are just... Th th this also has the sort of, again, sickness of being a dry zombie. Because, again, for 4 cost card, it has decent stats, but there are a lot of 4 cost cards that the plant can play that they'll just stick in front of Parasol. And they'll have just even a 4 cost 4-4. Four, four. We'll, they'll clash for 4 dam for 4 versus 3 on turn four, and then on turn five, they'll just trade and knock each other off the field. And that's really, you know, before you're going to really be able to get your value from Parasol Zombie. I've also tried Parasol Zombie in decks with, let's say, lower cost cards to protect them from getting field cleared, but it's usually just better to get better cards that are not field clearable on the field than relying on Parasol Zombie in order to protect them, because if you don't get Parasol Zombie, your deck, the rest of your deck is garbage if it's, if it's a really easily field clearable deck. Um, I find the best combo of Paracel Zombie is actually uh, with Immortitia. You can play Paracel Zombie uh, in order to set up cards like big finisher cards like uh, Maniacal Laugh. Usually if you have Paracel Zombie, they're not going to be, like even if they play like 3 to Chomper, I guess Cobb Cannon will remove it, but usually between it and the Zombies is protected. Um, it is pretty good with Maniacal Laugh. I do really use use this in a lot of, a lot, a lot of decent decks. Uh, I'm going to give it a B. Just because, again, it is a useful part of some decks, like I explained, but uh, it's just not A tier. All right, moving right along. Here's Thinking Cap. Thinking Cap, I, I just want to want to put one thing out here. Unless you have exactly the correct deck for Thinking Cap, Thinking Cap is garbage. You do not want to just be running this as a card. Look, it's four cost and gives you two superpowers. These superpowers still cost one. So essentially, what you're, what this card is, is a six cost play two superpowers. That's how much it sort of costs total. And superpowers are usually the equivalent of either a two or a three cost card. Um, the let's say ultimate abilities are, are are made to basically be three cost cards and the secondary abilities are made to be in general two cost cards obviously there's a lot of exceptions i will make a tier list for the superpowers eventually uh, this is very unreliable because you don't know which superpowers you're going to get every once in a while you'll get these overall just amazing superpowers like super brain super or smash's ultimate ability or even infinity or neptuna uh, but every once in a while you'll just get like a random chop that is completely unplayable you'll get um, you know, backup dancers, you'll just get a lot of garbage. Again, there's a plenty of lightning bolts and things which are kind of always good that you can get from Thinking Cap, but it's still not worth it to spend six, let's say to spend six and you get two lightning bolts, which is actually above average for superpowers. Spending six brains for two shots of three damage is really not a good deal. It's actually very underpowered. Thank you, Waka Waka. I really appreciate it. Two months subscribing. Now, uh, this card becomes very good when it's either combined 
with uh, a card in a different class, which again, it just makes it a lot less useful. Uh, the two cards are teacher because then the thinking cap itself costs three and the two superpowers are then free. So then instead of being six costs for two superpowers, it's three costs for two superpowers, which is ridiculous value. Uh, the problem with this is Zombology Teacher is a very weak card and very difficult to stay on the field. So the main combo they actually use Thinking Cap, uh, combine it with is Dr. Space Time, uh, which will then, it'll then be a four cost card, two superpowers, which is a good deal because superpowers are usually more, uh, give you more value than just uh, two brains apiece. Uh, and th that is a viable combo for a huge Giganticus or Super Brains only. Uh, since in most decks, Thinking Cap is not good, but there are some decks where it is very, very good. Especially if you're trying to like do a, you know, Super Brains trickster deck, you really need Thinking Cap in order to have like your cheap tricks. It really it is very good with trickster because it'll charge it three times. Huh. B tier? We'll put it in B tier. Solid B. It is good. In, I, I, again, you do run in a bunch of decks. All right, moving right along. Triplication. This is such a flawed card. Drawing cards in your deck is a good thing. Conjuring a random imp, a random zombie, and a random gargantuar is it's just garbage. First of all, most gargantuars in this game are garbage because they just get easily answered by Shamrock and Squash. So you usually get one dead card just right off the bat. Your imp could just end up being a regular imp. It's just so unreliable. If this card drew you three cards in your deck, that would be good. Don't say combine this with Dr. Space Time and each of the cards will still cost one less. It would still be better to draw three cards in your deck. I wish this said th draw three cards in your deck. Even then, it would be a little expensive for four. You don't really want to be drawing on turn four going into turn five because you lose a lot of tempo. Uh, turn four is such an important, you know, turn in the game, usually a tempo swinging time in the game. You don't really want to be drawing cards. Uh, anyway, this is just going straight into F tier. It's completely unplayable. It's a piece of trash garbage. Moving right along. Uh, here's Chopper Commando. Again, it's just a five cost six five. Any zombie that costs five or more and just has stats is almost completely unplayable in the game, especially because this one doesn't have good stats. <laughs> At least this should be a six six or something. Uh, really just garbage. We're going to put this in. Um, this It says over here on the tier list, you can, set, you can see it says six cost because this used to just be a token uh, coming from Halocopter. Uh, now it's actually its own card. They made it for some reason to its own card that costs five. Who cares? Moving right along. Get that weak stuff out of here. All right, so here is Gadget Scientist. Gadget Scientist, I explained before, is a really good finisher um, in uh, just science decks. Now, you have to really build your your whole deck around Gadget Scientist for it to be good. You have to sort of have high attack science zombies, which is not actually an easy thing to do, because that means your drone engineer had to have survived for a number of turns in order to buff them up. There's really not a lot of high attack science cards, other than maybe playing like Halocopter on turn six and playing Gadget Scientist on turn seven is viable. You can also do a lot of really weird stuff with Gadget Scientist, uh, like combining it with um, Mime Garg, which I'm gonna get to in a second. Now, this is not a good combo, guys. Mime Garg and Gadget Scientist in the same deck, I've tried it a lot of times. And when it works, it's amazing. It does like 20 damage in one turn, but it's so unreliable again, because if you have your, this is a turn 10 combo. So if you are having your Mime Garg, on the field, um, this would have to survive on the field and your science cards, your one or two science cards, and you'd also have to have the gadget scientist in your hand. And for all those things to happen sort of in one turn is very unlikely. Uh, and the best way to actually use gadget scientists is to play science cards and buff them up. So you can really buff your science cards. The best way to actually do this is Professor Brainstorm and use this guy. You can find the, I think you can find on YouTube the, uh, the sweet science deck where you, you sugar retreat above your guys and then you know on the trick stage and then you immediately play your gadget scientist and thank you so much for giving for subscribing with twitch prime huge shout out to forgiving Sh check out his stream uh overwatch player really good overwatch player so here is um sugary sugary so you can again buff up your science cards with you know, this or with uh lunch boxes even and uh use your gadget science overall it's a decent card it's 
a very necessary finisher in a lot of decks. I'm not going to say it's actually as necessary as Drone Engineer for science decks, and it's not as good of a card, because you can really play, you know, Drone Engineer and actually just use Going Viral and Bonus Attacks to finish off your opponent. I'm going to give it a solid B tier, though, since, again, it does have a lot of uses in a lot of decks. All right, moving right along. There, I finally shout out for giving. Little, little tiny streamer who super, super underrated. I hope his channel does well. Um, all right. Uh, here's Mime Garg. Mime Garg, it, it, it's usual, again, this is usually a really bad card to run in your deck. First of all, playing this dry, it's a 5-5-7. Five, five, it has amazing ability. doesn't matter. It's usually just answered by Shamrocket or Squash or whatever removal card your opponent has. Just bam, it's off the field. So this, again, does have the sickness uh, we can call this the, uh, <laughs> the the dry sick the dry sickness of just being a non gravestone just dry five or cost more zombie. Um, on the other hand, when you teleport this in, you can do some really really crazy combos. The uh, things I really were able to do this with is teleporting this in and then playing tr mustache monument trickster the next turn. I actually I think I've posted decks for every single brainy hero using that combo. Definitely did it for brainstorm and Morticia. Um, you can do it with Rust Bowl too, and that is actually amazing. So again, the 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 play is teleport Mime Guard on turn six, uh, and then you play Mustache Monument with Trickster on turn seven. That will make the Trickster do two bonus attacks, and then the Mime Guard will two, do, do two bonus attacks, and that results in a twenty-two damage combo that will usually finish off your opponent. Uh, and it's really really good in that deck. The Mime Mime Trickster is like a, a really really solid combo. Now. I, I need to just point out a few things of how not to use Mime Gargantua. A lot of people say, Fry, you should use Mime Gargantua with Rust Bolt together with the Going Viral. Uh, and that will give all your cards Frenzy. And uh, you, they're going to end up doing all these bonus attacks. They're Frenzied attacks. And then your Mime Garg is going to end up doing a bonus attack every single time one of your uh, Frenzy guys does bonus attack. And a Frenzied attack is considered a bonus attack in this game. And the reason that that's not a good strategy uh, is simply because... Going viral, you'd have to your your mind you'd have to play your mime guard basically on turn five, and then on turn six is the time you're going to be playing going viral. So the chances that your mime guard, first of all, survives both both turn five and turn six is almost zero if you're playing against any half decent uh, plant deck. Also, the other guys are gonna have to have they're gonna have to survive on the field and also end up with plants against them for two turns like on turn five and on turn six they're gonna have to end up like with plants that they can kill and with the extra one one going viral actually able to do those bonus attacks basically it's almost an impossible strategy to pull off so stop asking me um this is a card which is extremely extremely good in a couple of decks but is basically useless all over the game and that's why it's going Together with all of its friends in B tier. All right. Here we go. Pirate's Booty. <laughs> this card is ass. <laughs> this is so bad. Guy, just... <laughs> get it? Just compare this card to, like, the decent B tier Lurch for Lunch. Uh, not with Fun Dead Razor, I mean. Which just draws you two cards. Now, this, if you have two minions on the field. And again, this is a trick. So your two minions have to be have played on the field, survive turn four, and survive on turn five. Then this does the exact same thing as uh, the card that costs two less, Fun Dead Razor. The chances of having three cards, even a third card that survives turn four and turn five in order to draw a third card is almost completely impossible. If this card costs three, literally costs exactly the same as as Fun Dead Razor, I think Fun Dead Razor would still be better because it just solidly, reliably draws you those two cards instead of this one, which will usually draw you zero. Uh, maybe it'll draw you one. Two would be amazing. Three is still almost impossible. This card is so bad. It's so garbage. I actually would put this in delete tier too. You know what? I'm making a delete tier. Just screw it. This is the last straw. There. We're going in here, I'm gonna get this guy. I just don't, I wish the card 
It's not that it's F and it's unplayable. I wish the cards just didn't exist because you just end up conjuring this from like, you know, your random tricks that you conjure from, I don't know, Mad Chemist, and you just start leaping it into into, into these pieces of trash garbage. I have to fix the, um, the chrome a little bit. Here we go. Even Cardboard Zombie at least doesn't get like conjured as often as these stupid leap cards. I think we'll just stick you in here too. Uh, all right, moving right along. Such a piece of trash garbage. All right, here is a portal technician. Now, this is a cool card. It doesn't have good enough stats for its cost. So five costs four, four. So the only time it's good is if it gets removed and your opponent could just not remove it. Like it's not a big enough threat on turn five being a four, four that your opponent has to. So you stick this in front of one of your opponent's minions. It's, it's so, it's too circumstantial that this will get any value really have not found a good this used to actually used to be a six cost card i haven't really found any good decks <laughs> to use portal technician you teleport in portal technician in front of one of their minions it's like such a bad use of a teleport this is better cards just compare this to like to just like having teleport viking that just seven damage bullseye to your opponent's face puts a seven five in the field drains their block meter sets up the win the next turn like this doesn't if you have a card, every card in your deck has to help you win. It has to contribute to your overall win condition. What win condition is Portal Technician part of? Like, what? when will, when is this ever going to be a good idea? Valkyrie, because that's two minions. Stupid idea. Guys, dumb idea. Uh, and for that reason, I am putting Portal Technician... I'm putting an F tier. It's really completely unplayable again it's okay if you're just having an rng deck like we used to run like professor pay too much to win like a guard feast deck we used to throw a couple of these in here and teleport them in front of the opponent's minions just for kicks but it's really so unreliable and again the minion it creates there's a lot more one cost zombies in the game than there are zombies that cost five or more so usually this is just going to make a one or two cost card which is just going to be horrible value in general so because of unreliability unreliability and just in general not able to find a deck to fit it into i'm putting it in f tier it's a fun card it's a fun card so is mad chemist it doesn't make it doesn't make it get out of f tier should i put it in d just because it's a little fun no i'm just keeping an f shut up guys all right now if you're looking for a good five cost card this is decent now you, again this has the dry zombie sickness of being a five cost card that essentially just has stats this is so easy it has this ability of draining the opponent's block meter but that ability is almost impossible to pull off if you just throw this on the field because they can literally stick a weenie beanie in front of this uh, which will prevent it from doing its 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 bonus attack they can remove this with shamrocket remove it with squash uh, all the removal cards will take it off the field before that ability activates. Uh, you can play this on turn 7 together with bonus attack. Again, really bad idea because on turn 7, they'll probably just win the game. If you play, if you spend 5 brains on this card, you're not even going to have a chance to do that bonus attack. Also, they can just easily remove it off the field. The only way to really use Shield, Shield Crusher Viking is together with Teleport because then they can't answer. And this does a huge, again, 7, Bullseye, and remove your opponent's block meter. That is a really good way of using Shield Crusher. Uh, even better is to use it in... Uh, with Mustache Monument, this is actually the finishing combo in the Professor Mustache deck I showed you before. Uh, very, very useful. Again, it's not useful in a ton of decks. There's a lot of better cards in the game, but but it's fine. Uh, I'll stick it in B tier with those cards that are just like really good in a couple decks, but overall, pretty crappy card. I think it fits right there. Guys are saying Viking Easy A. I'm going to say it's B because, again, it's not... I would put it in A, but if it was useful in a ton of decks, like a, a lot of, but it's really only useful in a few, in, in just a few decks it's worth running. That's why it's in B. All right. Here's Hail A Copter, which I actually called uh, this card for four years, Hail O Copter. <laughs> it's Hail A Copter. Shut up. All right. So this is a good version of Chopper Commando because it does not have the dry zombie disease. Instead of playing this dry in the field and letting your opponent answer, you can actually play this after the fact um, and use this to respond to your opponent. Or you can just summon this to an empty lane and it does six damage for a six cost card. That really is not bad. This is a this is actually a very good card for what it does. Uh, summoning a six five. You can use it as a control card, like in control card. Um, it's not quite as efficient as rocket science and things like that, but you can use it also. It puts tempo on the field. You can use it as an aggro card as a finisher. You can summon this onto the field and play gadget sciences, which I think is a really good idea 
for budget players to be running like a science deck with drone engineer and um drone engineer you run uh then on turn six you're gonna play chopper uh hel helicopter and on turn seven you play gadget scientist and that will do a lot of damage you can also just play this onto the field and use lurch for lunch to make it for two cost card and make it do a bonus attack uh that's a turn eight combo which is okay again you're not gonna see this a lot on the highest level of the game but this is really really good card for budget players um I, I feel like i would even use this more if it fit into more decks on the highest level of the game it really doesn't fit into a lot of decks though i'm sort of split to put this either in b tier or c tier I just feel like I, I, I would love to use this card more. <laughs> it is a little expensive on the highest level of the game. Since I'm going to be making this in terms of what the highest level of the game is, I'm going to sort of reluctantly put this in C tier. But for budget players, uh, this is solid B or even A. Because I, I really I really think in overall this is a good card. It's just it's just outclassed by other by it just doesn't find it's it's just it, there's it's hard to really find a deck on the highest level of the game that this even fits into. So we'll put it in C. All right. Kitchen Sing Zombie. Now, I've heard some people say this is the best card in the game. Look how many abilities. It has armor. It's got bullseye, frenzy, overshoot, anti-hero. Guys, at the end of the day, this card has the same problem as every five or more cost card that just has stats. And it does just have stats. It does not affect the field in any way. And then doing, I mean, the overshoot two, I guess, the ability again, that just does two extra damage to your opponent's face. It has frenzy. This is really just a stat card. And it is removed if it's played dry. It's removed by Shamrock, it's removed by Cobb Can, it's removed by all the removal cards. If you play it in front of another minion, so it, it, it dodges Shamrock, it, but then it's just removed by Hammer. And there's actually a lot of things that can deal with this. There's a lot of cards that, also, if you just play this on the field, if this gets, if you put a four health plant in front of this, this is really just going to be doing two damage that turn, which is just not enough for a six cost card. I think at like five, this would be a lot better um just because it would be a ridiculous amount of stats for a five cost card and it's a little bit difficult to answer six it's just too slow there's such better cards in this game uh even i really even unthought viking your shield crusher viking i mean is the much better card because uh again doing six damage immediately to your opponent's face or seven bullseye seven bullseye and this ability is a lot better uh, if you combine it with Mustache Monument, also this card costs costs one less. The 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 difference between a five and six cost card really makes this bad. Um, I don't know why people are saying a. This is actually a, a really really bad card, and it's almost completely unplayable on the highest level of the game. Uh, and I, for that reason, will be sticking this in D tier. That's right, guys. It's one of the most overrated. This is seriously one of the most overrated cards in the entire game. People just look at this. They get like they they get like this little thing. They're like, Bullseye, Frenzy, give me more. So much abilities. Best card. No, it's not. It's really, really not. Every once in a while, you'll see this take over a game. It, the same way every once in a while, you'll see Mad Chemist and, and Gentleman Zombie take over the game. If for some reason, the opponent only not only can't answer this this card on turn six, but also has nothing that they can play that will finish off the opponent on turn six. Usually games are not going past turn six or seven uh, on the highest level of the game. That's what I'm putting in D. All right. Uh, Wizard Garg is a perfect example of, again, a gargantuar with just dry zombie sickness. It's just a stat card. It has bullseye. Who cares? The, the, must, the, the Garg synergy is almost impossible to pull off. Again, you can try teleporting this in. There's just a mill. Just compare this to Shield Crusher. It's just, it's so outclassed by Shield Crusher. This is so much better. Don't try to pull Gari Synergy, guys, because again, the chances of a, a Gargantua, you play it on the field, it survives that turn, and then it survives the next turn that you can even, you know, get your Wizard Garg to activate it. It's almost impossible. This is actually a completely unplayable card. I'm putting in F tier. I, I, I seriously am going to be making a point to be putting a lot of a lot of the big big dry zombies. Uh, there a lot of them are going to end up in F tier because they're almost completely unplayable, especially six six or more cost. Maybe the five cost cards. Maybe there's a use for it. All right, here's this card, Baboon Rising. This is this is probably overall the most fun card in the game. Uh, just turning your little random guys into huge, and it's so random. You get Zombie, you get Trickster, Binary Stars, you start getting all your Gargantuars, which are usually 
unplayable. Um, and they're actually good now because, again, it's just getting so much value out of these little tiny cards turning into the big ones. This is a very good combo with Swabby, which is free, or Brain Vendor, which essentially is free, especially with Nebula, then you can play this a little bit earlier. Um, so not only is this an extremely fun card, this actually is an extremely effective card. This is a viable win condition, not only for budget players, but even on the highest level of the game. Now, again, this got nerfed a lot when uh, card draw got nerfed, because usually drawing a lot of cards would help you set up like the combo with a lot of little minions and a Bad Moon Rising. Also, again, Nebula got nerfed, which really helps you, prevents you from ramping up efficiently, but it's still decent. Um, I would probably nowadays in the state of the game have given this just in terms of how effective of a card it is I would put it in B tier but because it's the most fun card in the game and I very very strongly suggest everyone craft a few copies of these uh, especially for budget players because this is really the only you can you can combine this with a pure budget deck and just have buried treasures and brain vendors and basic control cards and actually make a deck out of that and it's a pretty reliable win condition every once in a while you have a sad moon rising where it turns up to a bunch of freaking i don't know blow blow imp and and, and all kinds of garbage but usually you're gonna get a lot you get a big frenzy frenzy minions and every once in a while you get that zombot uh, i'm gonna give that a nice solid a tier card this is going to be the one where I'm going to get a lot of, a lot of crap from people. This card is not nearly as good as it looks. It is way, way too expensive at seven. I feel like at six, this could actually work. The, if you play this dry on the field on turn seven or on turn eight, it will be removed by Shamrocket. It will be removed by Squash. This is so expensive. This is really, really, really... Now, again, if you teleport this in, then it's fine. Because it's 6-7, has good stats, has that bullseye. You're, you're teleporting this in, though, on turn 8. Or on turn 7, if you're lucky, if you have a teleportation zombie that can somehow survive turn 6 and turn 7. <laughs> it's really difficult. If you have a teleportation... It's almost impossible for a teleportation zombie to survive 6 and 7. Unless you teleport the teleportation zombie in on turn six and then play this on seven still a very unreliable strategy i maybe should try the deck again where you try to teleport this in because if you can get this in on the field it'll just i mean the history cards are just ridiculous you start getting undying pharaohs and you start getting their you know mondo bronto is a history card you always get in the water lane it's the only amphibious history card for the five cause dinosaur it's really really good um you can play the Mechasaur on dry on turn seven if you have, uh, let's say, a buried treasure on the field, because then that will immediately activate it again. Usually the buried treasure does not survive. I guess you can ramp up to this. I really should try another deck with, with Mechasaur, but uh, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Maybe I'll try like a ramp Dynatronic Mechasaur. Again, you can find some decks on YouTube where I use this, and it is okay. It's not nearly as good as it looks because, again, the main usually it's two eye maintenance. Um, it will usually be removed before it does anything when you play it dry, and you need it then to have teleport. And that's it's turn eight. It's way too late. And for that reason, I'm going to stick it in. I'm going to stick it in D tier. It's just in terms of playability. I could put it in C. It probably is better than the, than the cards in D tier. All right, I'll stick it in C. It's probably just as useful in the highest level of the game as Helicopter and and freaking uh, Trick or Treater, Duck Stash. Eh, it's about the same as Duck Stash, to be honest. All right, and here's the last card, of course, in the Brainy class. One of the best cards in the entire game. I would, if you're going to start crafting legendaries, this would be one of the cards I would say start crafting because you can really just make a deck out of four tricksters. You don't have to have any really more expensive cards. Uh, this is the, a trickster. It does an immediate bonus deck when played. So you can play this on the, on the field just dry uh, because then it doesn't have the problem of being a zombie dry because you still got that six damage bonus attack. Uh, which is a really good finisher. The best way, of course, though, to play this is together, either with teleport, because then you teleport it in, it'll do 12 damage, does a bonus attack, and then the attack phase does another six. Uh, or even better is to play it together with Mustache Monument, uh, which will make this do immediately just bam, bam, uh, you know, 12 damage, and you still have your huge 6-6 six, six on the field that they have to deal with that turn. Uh, it's part of Valk Trickster Hybrid, but you can make just Trickster decks, you just have to make sure you have a lot of tricks that can control your opponent uh, while getting, you know, while setting up your big trickster combo to finish off. 
Uh, this is going to easily go into S tier, being one of the best cards in the entire game. It's actually in set one, when the, this game was made, this used to be a 7-7, seven, seven, which means it really just takes three trickster shots to finish off your opponent completely, which was way too overpowered. They nerfed it to six. I, I, I think this is a balanced card. I'm really happy that it exists in its state. I don't think it's overpowered, um, but it is one of the best cards in the game. Now, just want to give you guys one... Um, one sort of trick for trickster decks that's really important, I feel like a lot of people sort of miss this, is that the lucky number is 12. So this doesn't have bullseye. So you really need to do eight damage to your opponent and then proc their block. And that once you do that, your trickster finishes off your opponent all in one turn, let's say with either teleport or with mustache monument. So the best way uh, to do that is with cards like uh, Beam Me Up. This will start shipping again to get eight damage worth of beam me up. And maybe if you're running barrel of dead beards in your deck or any of the other little cards you're running around this, uh, that eight damage and then you procking their block is totally doable. It's really nice to run um, in professor brainstorm. You want to run trickster together with uh, bungee plumber. This bungee plumber can contribute towards that eight damage. And this is also an, especially a very good way of procking your opponent's block, making sure they have the empty block meter before you come in with the trickster combo. It also is an extremely good um, budget, uh, little cheap card to control, and it makes the trickster uh, cost one less every single time you play a trick, obviously. Um, so that is uh, that is the brainy, brainy class. Really happy with the way this tier list panned out. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Again, let me know in the comment section below which class you would like to see me do next. I do plan on doing all of them. Hope you guys enjoyed. That was the Brainy class. Peace. This is Fry.